Hi, I'm Emil, the practical engineer, and today I'm making this solenoid engine. These are solenoids, and solenoids come in all shapes and sizes. I have a big one, and even very small ones. But the principle is for all solenoids the same. It's a tightly wound copper spool that when you put power on it, it pulls the plunger in by the magnetic field that's created. So, for this project I'm not going to use these pre-made spools, I'm going to make my own. I'm going to use this Delrin round stock to make the bobber for the solenoid on the lathe. Before I'm going to put the coil on it, I'm going to drill two small holes in here so I can mount it to the base later. I have this insulated copper wire, that's going to be the spool. So the next step is to wire it on there. And I need to leave some room at the end, so I'm going to put it through somewhere like this, have some room to spare. and then make the first windings. When I have a couple of windings done, I'm gonna put it on the lathe, it goes a bit quicker. Let's see if it works. I have the solenoid, I have a pin a plunger so I've got this I'm gonna put this halfway in and then if it works it should put it all the way in so, let's see that's an event <laughs> fall I don't know why that connection that's it so it works! The solenoid engine that I'm making is not gonna drive anything, it's just gonna be a nice display piece. So for that I'm gonna use this wood to make a nice base for it. I want to have the solenoid mounted over here, so I need to make two little feet from this piece of wood where the solenoid rests on. So now I have the solenoid that I can mount over here. The next step is to mount a holder here for the axle where the bearings will fit in and I'm gonna make that from this piece of wood. Having this made, the next step is to connect the plunger from the solenoid to the axle on the bearing. And I need to make a bushing for that for over here and a little arm that connects the plunger to that bushing so it can move around. Let's start with the bushing and then make the arm. If 
you like the content that I make and you want to see more of it, you should definitely go check out my Patreon page. It's linked over there and it's linked below. And if you become a patron, I have some really cool rewards, such as patron exclusive stickers, you get to see the videos a little bit sooner, or you could even get a monthly Skype call with me to discuss your projects. When I get a couple more patrons, I can do something what I really love to do, is do an after show for each project. In that show I can discuss a little bit more about the problems that I encountered, what I learned from it, mistakes that I made, and how I fixed them. But I need to have a couple more patrons for that to make time for that free in the week. So go check it out and see if it's for you. On with the project. So I have the connecting part for this side, for the axle, with the little arm made. And it works really well. Next step is to make the plunger. So it can connect to the arm. So I need to make a flat side on here, drill a hole in it so I can connect it. This is the first part of the solenoid engine and it's basically the piston with the arm that keeps it moving. I basically need two more things to get the thing working. One is a big flywheel to keep the thing in motion when it's at its end position, otherwise it would just stop after one stroke. The other thing is I need to make an eccentric bushing for over here that works with the switching mechanism. So the solenoid switches on and off at the right points. Let's start with that. All these components made I can lay them out on the base and glue them in place I didn't want to do that sooner because I didn't really know where to put everything now I do now the wooden components are in place it's time to give it a coat of lacquer so I'm gonna take all the components off and coat it Since I'm a mechanical engineer, I drew all this in 3D and then I was like, I'll do the electronics later. Well, later is now, so I have to figure this out kind of on the go, but I already know the concept of how I'm going to do it. On the eccentric bushing, I want two sliding contacts, one that's always in contact and the other one that does the switching for the solenoid on and off. So on the far part it doesn't make contact and on the thicker part it does make contact. And I've tried some things with copper wire and I'm gonna make a little spring like this that I can put on the bushing. This one seems to work very well. It stays in contact at all times and it doesn't give too much friction, so that's really nice. The other one, I want to have it a little bit adjustable, so I'm gonna put it a little bit further away so I can have a fine adjustment of when it touches and when it doesn't. Solenoids can take quite some current and with the content like this 
sliding on it and um, switching on and off the whole time I'm afraid that I'm gonna get a lot of sparks and I don't want that so I'm adding this power transistor to reduce the load so on the switching part there's only a little bit of current and then the big load of current just goes through the solenoid since I like the look of it I'm gonna mount it right here I think I have it all wired up correctly, so let's plug it in and see how it does. Turned out I changed the positive and the negative and then it doesn't work. So change them, let's see how it works now. Manually, it works. <laughs> I got it working. And remember when I said, and this thing doesn't give too much friction? This one seems to work very well. It stays in contact at all times and it doesn't give too much friction. So that's really nice. Well, I was wrong. It actually, I made the spring so strong that it was actually breaking this thing. So when this tried to move it, this was just counteracting the flywheel and it was not moving at all. The other thing is that I wanted to power it with 12 volts and that was way too little. So I put it on 24 volts now and now the spool has more than enough power to run it. So let's check it out. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> 